Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for England for EU4 1.32 Origins. So England is a nation located in Western Europe, everybody knows it. We're located right here in the British Isles and we have territorial holdings in mainland Europe as well. Lots of new players are deterred from playing England however, even though it is one of the most powerful nations because of the 100 years war which we are in versus France. And newer players might find it intimidating to fight France over Maine, PU them and then get on the right track to continue your game as England. But by using this guide, you will be dominating France in the first war, the surrender of Maine, PUing them, getting Scotland, getting Ireland, and then expanding to your heart's desire and playing whichever way you want. Now in this video we're going to be using a slightly different strategy. I know the most popular England strategy is like to release Normandy right here, release Gascony down here, destroy forts, blah blah blah, all that stuff, white piece France, then subjugate Scotland. I don't think that's the best England strat. I think this is the superior England strategy to get the most powerful strat that you can in the game. So by following along with all the steps you will be able to achieve this as well. Keep in mind that this will be pretty difficult and this is not a beginner strategy. Before we begin, if you find this guide helpful, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out the channel a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this or other U4 videos, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as England. So the first thing that you need to check when starting off your game as England is France's rivals. This is because we need one of Burgundy, Aragon or Castile to be rivaled to them. And in my case, Aragon and Castile are rivaled. That means we are going to be asking allying their rivals. The best ally you can get is Burgundy, but that's very rare. You will have to restart so many times to get Burgundy to ally you, although it is possible. And realistically, you only need to ally one of Castile, Aragon, or Burgundy. So we only need one of those guys. If you can get two, that's great. The most common one you're gonna get is Aragon, but both Castile and Aragon are pretty common as well. So now that we've checked off that, we got at least one of these guys rivaling France, we're good to continue. If none of Castile, Aragon, or Burgundy rival France, France, you need to restart. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rival France ourselves as well and rival somebody else too, like Scotland for example, and one of Lithuania or Burgundy. I'm gonna rival Lithuania, we're gonna eclipse them anyway when they get PU'd by Poland or you can rival Burgundy. Don't rival Denmark. There we go, our rivalries are done. Next we're gonna go into our estates and we're gonna give the clergy religious state and religious diplomats. And we're gonna give the burgers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, and indebted to the burgers. You guys probably know that we don't have the nobility estate as England, and we can't even summon the diet. Next, we're not gonna sell titles, but we are gonna seize land. And there we go, we got around 1,000 ducats with super cheap interest thanks to the burgers. Next, we need to hand out some seats to the parliament. We need eight, but we only have five, so I'm gonna give York here a seat in parliament. I'm also gonna give Montgomery one, and I'm gonna give Derby one, why not? There we go, we've completed that. Next, we're gonna go into our parliament and start a debate. And these are the ones which will usually be available to you. I recommend taking something related to your army, such as recruitment cost or recruitment time, or the advisor stuff. So I'm gonna take this advisor stuff, let's give out some stuff here so they accept that immediately. I'm gonna do this one, promote meritocracy, promote meritocracy once again, and I'm gonna take sides in parliament. And there we go, we have advisor costs for the next 10 years. Next we're gonna hire some advisors. Get a morale of armies, discipline, fort defense, or national manpower guy. I have a morale of armies, so I'm gonna take him. For your diplo advisor, take a spy network, diplo rep, or improve relations guy. I have a diplo rep guy. And for your admin advisor, take whichever level one you have available. I'm gonna get the stab cost guy. Next we're gonna take this 13k stack and send them up to York. We're also gonna get one cavalry regiment from the 16k stack and send that one up to York as well. Then we're gonna take this 15k stack and take them to Cayenne. And we're gonna recruit four more infantry regiments. We're also gonna start building galleys. I just started construction on 10 galleys, you should do the same. Next we need to select a naval doctrine. We're of course gonna select the wooden wall. Now it's time for alliances. Like I said, we're gonna rival everyone we can out of Castile, Aragon or Burgundy. Here I am, I'm gonna send an alliance offer to Aragon and once a day passes, I'm also gonna send one to Castile. It's a good idea to ally Austria as well, so I'm just gonna send them a royal marriage. There we go. 
and I'm gonna start building a spy network on France. Something else we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Champagne here and we're gonna select transfer trade power and tell that guy from the North Sea to go transfer from Champagne. Now it's time to let a couple of days pass, get this army here, get these diplomats back and wait for the merchant to arrive in Champagne. Now we're waiting for the surrender of Maine Ward of Fire and maybe even the War of the Roses disaster. Of course we start out with a horrible ruler, a 0, zero, zero and we don't even have an heir. Of course you could introduce an heir to prevent the War of the Roses. That is something I recommend doing because we're gonna be in the War of the Roses pretty much the same time we're gonna PU France and we are gonna have to stick with this 0, zero, zero guy for around 15 years if we spawn a zero age heir but we can also spawn a 15 year old heir and be able to abdicate pretty fast. So let's introduce a new heir. And my guy is actually pretty good, 364, and he's 8 years old, so we're only gonna have to wait a couple of years to abdicate. Now it's time to wait for these guys. There we go, a couple of days have passed. Austria has sent me an alliance offer, which I'm gonna accept. And now that this guy in Champagne has arrived, we're gonna tell him to hostile trade. This increases our spy network construction by 25%. We're gonna need this for the war with France. And now that a diplomat is back, I'm also gonna ally Castile. Now that we've gotten to December 1st, your situation should look a little something like this. Being allied to Austria and at least one of Burgundy, Aragon or Castile. I have Aragon and Castile. You only need one of those guys. Like I said, Burgundy is the best, but it's very hard to get them. And now we're also gonna dissolve our alliance with Portugal. We don't need them, but we are gonna ally Denmark if they're rival to Scotland. This isn't something that's necessary at all, but if you can do it, do it. We're gonna be ending it pretty shortly after we take care of Scotland. Now that your two other diplomats are back, you're gonna start currying favors with whoever you're allied with. I'm allied to Aragon and Castile, so I'm gonna start currying favors with them. We can also delete the fort in Montgomery to save a couple of ducats. And now we're waiting for the surrender of main event, the fire. My bad on this one, you actually need to recruit 5 infantry regiments over here. So 16-4 on this army right here, and 10-4 on this army up here. Because Lithuania got PU'd by Poland, I set Provence as my rival. And there we go, the surrender of main event has fired, where we need to pick whether to give the province of Maine to France and avoid war with them, or declare a restoration of Union war on them. We are gonna be the one who declares the war, so it's an offensive war. France's allies will join. In my case they've allied Scotland and Provence and this is pretty common. These are the most likely allies they're gonna get. Sometimes they ally Brittany and sometimes they can ally the Pope or Genoa. It's not a big deal. So before we select this option here we're gonna go into our mercenary screen and hire a couple of mercenary companies. We're gonna be going way over our force limit, it's gonna be very expensive but this is something that we need to do. So hire any company that has a general with siege pips. More than one preferably. In my case I have only one the Bascoli right here with a two siege general and I'm gonna hire him in Cayenne for example and then we're gonna hire another company with a general that has a very high shock. So let's see here, I have the Flemish company, this guy has a 5 shock pip and I'm gonna hire him in this province right here. So those are the two Merc companies. Now, on our main stack right here, we're gonna recruit an admiral. There we go, he's kinda bad, but whatever, and we're still waiting for our galleys. You might have gotten your galleys already before the event has fired. And we're also gonna put John Talbot up here, the 243 guy, on this army, so he can go deal with Scotland. Now, if Scotland has an allied France, you're not gonna need to deal with them, and you're just gonna take this army down here as well. But in my case, that has happened, and that's why we kept that army there, so we can deal with Scotland. And once I get 50 mil points, I'm gonna be hiring another general for this army right here, the 20k stack. Now we're gonna wait a couple of days to get the free company, right, we can stick with this event for a month or two before it fires automatically, so I'm just waiting for the mercs now. There we go, the mercenary companies have been recruited over here, as we can see I got the Bascoli and the Flemish company, and now we can select, we will not surrender an inch of territory to the French. Boom, the surrender of main war has fired, and France has automatically occupied Maine. Now we're gonna call in one of Burgundy, Aragon and Castile, whoever we're allied to, with the promise of land. As we can see both Castile and Aragon will accept in my case, particularly because they're rivaled to France. So usually you can still ally them, but they might not come if they're not rivaled to France. And there we go, I'm gonna call in Aragon with the promise of land, boom, and I'm gonna call in Castile with the promise of land, boom. This 
is how that war should look like right now. Like I said, you need only one of these guys to win. If you have two or even three, that's excellent. So now we're gonna take these main ships right here and go and blockade Scotland over here in the Irish Sea. And we're gonna wait for Scotland to come and fight us or something with this army, beat them up a little bit, go siege down Dumfries and white peace Scotland as soon as possible. Meanwhile, with these guys over here, we're gonna go and unsiege Maine and focus on sieging down Chartres and Paris. Meanwhile, Castile and Aragon will come in from the south, or if you have Burgundy, them and their subjects will come in from over here, which is excellent. At this point, we can also take the mission, the 100 Years War, which we will do. Try to avoid fighting France as much as you can. And even though it's gonna be a lot of attrition, stack as many army regiments as you can on a fort so France is too scared to engage you. So now I'm just gonna go with all of these guys to siege down Maine and then I'm probably gonna stack both mercenary companies on Chartres and with my main army I'm gonna be ready to reinforce. Of course we will want to siege with the guy that has the most siege pips and we will want to fight with the guy that has the most shock pips. By the way I don't know why Austria wants to break their alliance with me. This isn't something that's gonna happen in your case. They're suddenly domineering towards me. What's up with that? There we go I'm on sieging Maine. Scotland has come to siege down my fort. You can activate the defensive edict in Normandy. It's a good idea. You can activate it in Laborde as well and even up here if you want to. There we go. Defensive edicts all around. I'm about to fight Scotland in the Irish Sea and they've started sieging Northumberland so I'm gonna go engage them with John Talbot. And there we go. I've stack wiped Scotland in Northumberland. That's why I said we should wait for them to come in our provinces and now I'm gonna go siege down Dumfries and white piece them as soon as possible. You could even split your navy up and go blockade Lothian as well. If everything is going according to plan, this is what your siege over here should look like. So I'm sieging Chartres and waiting for these guys to reinforce if I need to. And France should focus on your southern provinces. That's what they most likely do, in which case they'll come into contact with Castile or Aragon, or maybe if Burgundy is in your war, then that is the easiest option. Burgundy is way more powerful than Aragon or Castile and allying them will make this war so much easier. But like I said, you need to restart so many times. I I think there's a 93% chance of Burgundy rivaling England at the start, so it's pretty hard. And there we go, I've sieged down Dumfries, this and this province, and I'm standing on their capital. This is enough to white piece Scotland. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do, just white piece, that's it. There we go, Scotland's out of that war. These ships can now be gotten together and we can go to blockade France, and we're also gonna take this army with John Talbot over to continental Europe. First I'm gonna move them down to Sussex and tell these ships to go here as well. Meanwhile. Well, I've sieged down Chartres and now I'm sieging down Paris. Looks like Castile and Aragon are doing some work down here, so everything is going as it should. We also need to peace out Provence, so we will focus on them as soon as we take both Chartres and Paris. As we can see, France has found itself with a 15k stack in Calais, so this is a good time to engage them. I have way more troops than them. Try to pick off smaller stacks like that. You do know that France has the two big armies with the excellent generals, so don't engage them if you're about to fight both or if you're about to fight their vassals armies as well. This is what that situation is looking like right now. So I'm gonna send in John Talbot or that high shock guy as well. There we go. I'm gonna let one day pass or two apparently, then this guy, a couple of more days, then that army there. Let's see how that goes. Boom, boom, boom. And Francis stack is done for. We're still sieging down Paris and now that we hit them with a blow like that, we can go and siege down some other stuff as well. We should still be careful of their armies though. Once you've sieged down Paris, you can of course take the strategic control mission, which gives us a PUCB on France and perma claims on Brittany. But we're gonna be PUing them now and not later, so it really doesn't matter, we just need to advance down our mission tree. Like I said, once we got Chartres and Paris, the main thing you need to focus on is knocking out Provence as soon as possible. And there we go, I've sieged down Verdun and Barois and I can white peace Provence. In fact, in my case, I can also take warps from them, but you want to get them out of this war as soon as possible. You don't need to take anything from them, but if you can, it's a nice little bonus. And there we go, Provence is out along with Scotland. Now France has almost fallen and it's time to finish them off. And once you have around 50 to 60% war score, the war with France is done. If you did everything correctly, if you micromanaged correctly, avoid battles, siege down everything, and of course if you had at least one ally out of Burgundy, Aragon or Castile, this should have been a fairly easy war, of course depending on your skill level. And now we can finally peace out France. Of course, we're gonna select the Union with France peace option. Now, I'm gonna stay in this war for a little longer so I can take all of their money. And there we go, Union with France and all of their money. 
and that war is done. And there we go, now we have France as our junior partner and barely three years of the game have passed. This is the ultimate opening as the nation of England. Now that we're finished with probably the most difficult war, we're gonna be doing the entire campaign. It's time to chill a little bit because aggressive expansion is looking different in 1.32 apparently. Uh, I did not know about this map mode. So aggressive expansion will be pretty high and we do want to chill a bit. Now it's also time to focus on the levy the troops mission which will give us a subjugation CB on Scotland and perma claims on Ireland and don't take the subjugate France mission. Sure Henry will gain one in each category but come on dude he's a 0, zero, zero. we're gonna be abdicating with him pretty soon so why not buff up our air. So save this mission for the air that you introduced. Of course we're still way over our force limit and we will be deleting those mercenary companies. You can hire the free company instead of both of those two. So now it's definitely time to chill a little bit. Of course immediately we're gonna want to improve relations with with France and all that. At this point you can also turn off the defensive edicts that you set up everywhere to save some ducats. And you can also turn off your forts because the War of the Roses, well, it's not about to fire. You can also put your admiral in charge of the trade fleet and tell them to protect trade in the English Channel. And this guy over here that's hostile trading, well, you can tell him to maximize profit. At this point, a little coalition might form, but it's honestly not a problem. They're not going to be declaring on you if you have like three or four allies, particularly Austria, who's powerful as an emperor, Denmark, who has Norway and Sweden, and Castile or Aragon, and even Burgundy and their subjects. This coalition will not fire. Don't worry about it. Right now, we're just chilling. You can tell these two other diplomats to improve with outraged countries. And you can even set this guy over here in Champagne to actually establish communities instead. Maybe even the guy in Lubeck. Sure. At this point, it's also not a bad idea to try and get a level 1 improved relations guy. At this point, you may even consider going way over your diplo relations limit to ally as many nations as you can to prevent that coalition from firing. I've sent my guy from Lubeck to Rhineland and told him to establish communities as well. And there we go, a few months have passed and nations are already leaving the coalition with us. Of course, we're gonna improve above 50 with them to get them to leave. I'm gonna improve with Cole now. Once they get up to 50, they'll leave. The same thing is gonna happen with Brittany. I did ally a ton of nations though to prevent it from firing. Of course, I'm gonna be dissolving my lands with most of them once the coalition completely dissolves. We're also improving relations with France. They are improving at a pretty rapid pace and you can even enable support loyalists to reduce their liberty desire even further. And there we go, a few more months have passed, basically about two years after I fought France and the coalition has completely dissolved. It didn't fire thanks to all the allies we got, but now I am gonna be breaking my alliance with most of these guys, like Milan for example, Venice too, we don't need them, Brandenburg, Munster, the Paladin at Friesland and Ingolstadt. As you guys can see, I did ally quite a few nations to prevent it from attacking us. But now AE isn't even that high in this region anymore. These guys over here, they really don't care all that much. I don't know if I like this new aggressive expansion map mode though. Uh, it's kind of confusing because they're green, but they still have 44 aggressive expansion. So uh, yeah, I think I preferred the old one. Either way, now we're just chilling, building up our nation, getting ready to unlock this mission, levy the troops where we need a bunch of manpower, and then we're going to be declaring on Scotland and the Irish nations. Meanwhile, we're making money, paying off loans. Maybe we're going to help speed up the Renaissance in London a bit, and we're going to build some buildings. The real cost of this early PU over France is just waiting around for like the next 10 years after the war and just chilling. Of course you all know that you can dev up one of France's provinces to get them even more loyal. Sure you can go and find the cheapest one. Let's see right here. Charger seems to be pretty cheap so I'll dev it up once and mill for them. And oh there we go they're actually loyal. So once France is actually loyal you can abdicate with Henry. Sure we'll lose prestige and legitimacy but I think uh, 13 more monarch points per month is worth a lot more than zero. So there we go. We've abdicated and now we have a good ruler. This did get France this loyal once again. It's not a problem at all. Now we can also give the clergy clerical advisory council and we can give the burgers commercial advisory board. Right now we're still chilling. Aggressive expansion is still pretty high and we're waiting to unlock this mission right here. For your tier two government reform, honestly, you can even go with curtail noble privileges. We don't even have nobles, right? To get some extra ducats in these first couple of decades in the game. Sure, you could swap the strength and noble privileges later. We won't be using that much manpower. France will be helping out a lot in our wars. Fighting these guys up here isn't a lot of manpower at all. It really is up to you this time. I am gonna go with strength and noble privileges though. Can't let you guys down, man. 
<laughs> it seems that in 1.32, the AI does like to use favors too. Castile just asked me for 1600 soldiers. Sure, I'll give it to them. Why not? Even though it will slow us down in our mission a bit. Of course, once you abdicate with Henry and you get your new ruler in charge, you can take this mission. And there we go, around 10 years after we finished off France, we can unlock the mission Levy the Troops. It gives us perma claims in Ireland and a subjugation CB on Scotland. We're of course gonna take it. There we go, now we have that CB against Scotland and we can vassalize them. I'm just gonna wait a few more months to get France below 50 and then I'm gonna be declaring on Scotland. So now it's time to declare our subjugation war versus Scotland. There we go, this is gonna be an easy war, unless of course they allied someone like Denmark or Castile, but either way, with France on your side it's not gonna be a problem at all. For your first idea group as England, you can go one of two ways. You can either open up with the classic exploration and expansion combo and go exploring. Of course, we are a little further away than we need to be to properly colonize during this early game. That's why England usually takes them later than other nations, like Portugal and Castile. Same with France, they take it a bit later. So if you want to, you can open up with exploration and expansion. But if not, I recommend taking them for your third and fourth idea groups, respectively. Otherwise, you should open up with quantity and then economic and then exploration and expansion. You can go either way, the choice is yours, you will still be colonizing the same stuff, pretty much North America, that's what we're mainly interested in due to our position in the English Channel trade node, and by the time we get to North America, even if we take it as our third and fourth idea groups, there won't be anyone there but natives, and natives are fixed in 1.32 I'm happy to say, so you can either go quantity, economic, then exploration and expansion, or exploration and expansion, and then quantity and economic. The choice really is up to you. I'm gonna go with exploration and expansion, but the difference is not that big. Of course, at this point you will want to start focusing on dip, which we apparently already are. Once we've beaten up Scotland in this very easy war, we will of course be making them our subject and taking all their money. There we go. Two very powerful subjects and not even 20 years into the game. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on wiping out the rest of these Irish nations over here before focusing our attention on exploring and other continental matters. Of course, there are lots of players who don't like to get involved in European stuff, but we already got France as a PU, so why not take advantage of that and give them all the provinces that they want, take some more for us, and later even face the Iberian nations and the HRE. But like I said right now, we're focusing on making money and taking care of these Irish guys. Once you subjugate Scotland, you will be able to unlock this mission, gain 150 admin power, gain some perma claims, and give us a very nice advisor cost discount as well as promote culture cost. At this point you can also tell this merchant in Champagne to maximize profit and tell the guy that we sent to Rhineland to go back to Lubeck and tell him to maximize profit as well. Of course if you opened up with exploration ideas you will want to select your light fleet and take out three light ships from that one. Let's tell these seven other guys to go back to protecting trade and on these three light ships we're gonna recruit an explorer. There we go and we can select a mission and tell him to explore for example, the North Atlantic coast. Keep sending him on missions once he comes back. Something else you can do apart from straight up conquering these nations in Ireland is vassalizing them. Pretty much all of them will accept being vassalized, even Thomond over here who's expanded to four provinces in my case. So I will be diplomatically vassalizing Thomond, maybe feeding some provinces to them, maybe taking some provinces for myself. Of course we can vassalize all of these guys, but that's just gonna bring a ton of subjects and remember, as England we don't have the nobility. We can't give out strong duchies. It will put us even further over our relations limit, but of course you can also always break some alliances with nations that you don't need to be allied with anymore. In my case Castile didn't even take the pew over Aragon, so I'm stuck with that alliance as well. But it's fine, we will be keeping these guys around for a little bit. And sure, like I said, I will be diplovassalizing Thomond over here. Ally them, royal marry them, guarantee them, offer them military access, influence them, pay off their debts, send them gifts. You already know how to diplovassalize nations. At this point you can delete your fort in Cayenne, you can delete your fort in Northumberland to save some ducats if you want to. You don't need to it's your choice. Once you get the colonists from exploration, you don't have to pick a native policy right away. Of course, we're gonna start off with the native coexistence policy, but later when we get the policy with expansion, we're gonna swap to native trading. So pick native coexistence first. There we go, now we can diplo vassalize Tomond over here, very nice, and now that we've done that, let's declare on some of these other guys here like uh, Lannister and Offaly, why not? There we go, easy war done, let's full annex both of these guys right here, boom, nothing difficult at all, time to fight someone else maybe, like Draconnell for example, sure, there we go, easy war, let's beast these guys out as well, 
that's all done. Let's declare on these guys. Oop, it seems that I have a truce with them. What about these guys? Sure, let's declare on this nation right here. Another easy war right there. We're just cleaning up these Irish minor nations. Let's full annex these ones as well. Now I'm just left with this one. I have a truce with them. I have one more subject in Tomond, and Scotland owns two provinces up here, which isn't bad at all. We got those for free when we subjugated them. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking centralized bureaucracy. Sure, you could take exile colonial companies when you start colonizing, but I don't think this is a very worth it reform. So centralized bureaucracy. Because aggressive expansion is still pretty high in Europe during this point and if we try and annex any other nations like Brittany for example or fight Burgundy for land, another coalition might happen. It's not something we really want. So during this time you could pop off a humiliation or a show strength war versus any of your continental allies. You and France are definitely strong enough to take anyone on at this point. I'll be declaring a little humiliation war on Burgundy right now. I'm gonna call in Denmark too. Why not? And there we go, a nice little humiliation war versus Burgundy. War reps humiliate all their money. Easy stuff. You may even get an event like this for Christopher Columbus if other nations have rejected him. In my case, he has been rejected by Portugal. So, uh, yeah, I can hear him. 226 two, six Explorer, he's pretty fast. Decide on your own if it's worth it 120 ducats or not. For your second idea group as England, if you open with exploration, you will of course be taking expansion. However, if you opened up with quantity, you will be taking economic. The choice is yours. I went with exploration, so of course, I'll be taking expansion. By the way, this is just a little war I'm helping out Denmark with. I haven't declared anything on my own. Of course, once you have above 200 relations with Scotland and any vassal you made over here in Ireland, you can start annexing them. And of course, once 10 years have passed too. I'm gonna start annexing Scotland and Thomond as well. As England, for your first stage ability, you should take higher developed colonies if you opened up with exploration and expansion. If you opened up with quantity and economic, you should take justified wars. I did open up with exploration and expansion, so I'm gonna take higher developed colonies. Once you unlock the overseas exploration idea from exploration and once you reach diplomatic tech 7, you will have enough colonial range to start colonizing. And I also gotta say that in 132, the AI loves trading stuff for favors. I keep getting asked all the time. Either way, we're gonna start colonizing. Sure, you could start colonizing over here, but be careful because these three provinces over here will drop the price of the fish trade good by 25%. Of course, we don't have that many fish provinces, so we don't really care about that. And let's establish a colony over here. One of your first targets in continental Europe, aside from France, of course, should be the nation of Brittany right here since we do gain permaclaims on their provinces. In my case, they seem to have allied Castile, which is pretty unfortunate, but that has nothing to worry about because we can simply make Castile break one of their alliances for 50 favors. And there we go, I just asked them to break their alliance with Brittany, they did it, and now we can comfortably declare on Brittany without anyone else even getting involved. I'm gonna declare for this province right here, and I'm just gonna let France do all the work. You should make sure that your aggressive expansion in Europe is pretty low prior to declaring this war. Once you discover any provinces in the American East Coast, you will be able to take this mission. Settler chance plus 20% and 50 diplo? Very nice. Of course, now the next mission tells us to colonize a province over here, so that is exactly what we're gonna be doing with our second colonist, and pick any province in the colonial Eastern America colonial region. You can check that by going into the geographic map modes and colonial and trade regions. I recommend colonizing a center of trade or an estuary first, such as Massachusetts, or Manhattan. Massachusetts is pretty good. Tandev, very nice. We'll be sending him pretty soon. And there we go, I've integrated Thomond. Excellent. And there we go, I've beaten up Brittany. Make sure to check if a coalition will form before fighting that nation. In my case, it's just Provence and Burgundy. Then a coalition can form because it needs four nations. So I am gonna be full annexing Brittany and taking all their money. No vassalization, no giving them to France. Once we do conquer Brittany, we will be able to unlock the mission Conquer Brittany, which gives us permaclaims in France. Over here. And Baron, this time you should also be unlocking the mission Maritime Empire, which gives us an awesome admiral and gives us a permanent claim on Gibraltar. That is down here. In my case, it's owned by Portugal. Of course, at the start it's owned by Granada, and later it gets conquered by Castile. Pretty strong Portugal in my game too. Now I'm finally gonna be finishing off the nation of Sligo right here. I kind of forgot about them. Of course, in your case, you'll probably already have all of Ireland. Now, Catholic has been buffed even further in 1.32. It was already one of the most powerful religions, but now it's even more powerful. Lots of these papal bonuses right here give up other stuff. This one gives you construction cost as well. This one gives you minus yearly corruption too. This one gives you minus land maintenance too. And this one gives you minus 10% diplo annex cost as well. Nearly all of these have been buffed. Blessed ruler gives you plus 10% morale of armies now too. Catholic is super super powerful now. Not that it wasn't before, but for some reason it's been buffed. Of course I will be full annexing this nation too. 
Nice. This is uh, a pretty big coalition that Austria is facing right here. Uh, I wonder what happened. In fact, they seem to be in two coalition wars. Uh, I don't know if anything's changed around with that in 1.32, but uh, yeah, pretty wild. Once you get a colony going that's next to some native nations in North America, it's time to ship a little army over there. For your second age ability, you can select this if you maybe want to steal Aragon or something from Castile, or if you want to steal Norway or Sweden from Denmark. That's not something that's really in line with my goals, so I'm gonna take Justified Wars. You should also take this if you don't care about this. Once you have claims on nations that you border in North America, it's time to declare on some of them and establish our colony very quickly. It's gonna be very easy, they're way behind on tech, and uh, yeah, just go and fight these guys. Meanwhile, back in Europe, we can finish off some nations like Provence over here, for example. Of course, you will want to hire a conquistador for your North American army, so you can walk through terra incognita. Over here, I'll be full annexing Provence, very nice. Clean up some small nations left around in France like this. Maybe you'll even want to fight the Pope for provinces down here. For your tier 4 government reform, I recommend taking meritocratic recruitment. Now, when piecing out these North American nations, the nice thing is we can even take their tribal land over here. So basically provinces that they don't own right now, but it's basically their land as well. See, I'm fighting these guys over here. They're all basically one province miners, but I'm gonna take something like this. I could even take more if I explore further. And these are all their tribal lands. So let's do something like this. And now we own all of this. As soon as we core these up, a colonial nation will form. Excellent. Of course, once you have provinces in North America, you will be able to unlock this mission. We gain a pretty strong conquistador from that. Once you got a couple of provinces here, enough to form a colonial nation, and you're colonizing up here as well, you can start putting your colonists in other places. I'm gonna send mine to the Caribbean now. And there we go, I have annexed Scotland as well. Now we can take the mission, conquer Ireland. And when you finish up coring these provinces, a colonial nation will form. You can make a crown colony, a private enterprise, or a self-governing colony. I do have a video explaining what each of these does and which one is the best for where and which nation you're playing as. I'm gonna establish a crown colony. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. We started off as England, decimated France immediately in the surrender of Maine War, ended the 100 Years War, enforced our personal union over them, allied a bunch of nations and improved relations with everyone to avoid a coalition. After that, we set our sights on finishing off the British Isles, subjugating Scotland, creating a vassal in Ireland, finishing off Ireland and annexing both of them, and cleaning up some other nations in continental Europe like Provence and Brittany. By Burgundy to humiliate them. In your case, the Burgundian inheritance may have even fired, and France may have even gotten it. In my case, it's about to fire anytime soon when Charles here dies and Mary ascends to the throne, so we'll see what happens there. They're probably not gonna take Austria since they're rival to them, so they may become a junior partner of Flanders or Holland in my case, or they may even go to France, which means they'll go to me. Now that we're done with this, over in continental Europe, we can set our sights on fighting Burgundy, like I said, maybe even fighting the Iberian nations, stealing Norway and Sweden from Denmark breaking our alliance with Denmark, fighting them, and establishing an even bigger dominance in Europe. Meanwhile, we've started colonizing North America, we're about to establish a colony in Canada, and we've already established a colony in the Eastern North America colonial region. Of course, we did go very heavily into loans due to that first war, but money wasn't a problem, even though we do have quite a few loans still. In your case, you may have already paid them off, or you may have more than me. We're making a very nice income right now, 20 ducats, but we do need to pay off a couple of loans. Of course, that won't be a problem at all because we're about to start building buildings very heavily we're about to start making massive income from our colonies and we are about to become the richest nation in the world we're already number one on the great powers list we'll be passing ming soon too and we will be keeping that position until the end of the game by now i have been building some trade buildings in the center of trade provinces i will continue to build production buildings in all the high value trade good provinces as well such as cloth copper iron glass you guys already know. We'll be building some churches too in the provinces that give us more than 0.2 ducats. Later we'll be building manufactories, spawning coal in the late game, building all those furnaces and becoming even richer. Of course we full stated the entirety of the British Islands. We can even promote the Irish and Scottish cultures and we'll be forming Great Britain pretty soon as soon as we reach Admin Tech 10 and you should be in a very similar position to mine at this point in the game. Of course you will 
continue to advance down your mission tree which gives you claims in europe you're gonna have to fight these nations over there later fight some nations over here claims in egypt and when you form britain your mission tree will expand even more the indian branch will expand the colonial branches will expand and you will gain a ton more missions you will follow along the very fun mission tree as england and continue to dominate the entire world after this point we're gonna keep france around for a very long time so they can help us out in continental matters sure you could start integrating them as soon as possible which should be in a couple of months in my case but i do recommend keeping them around until later at least until the age of absolutism maybe you can feed them some provinces over here in the south maybe they'll get burgundy like i said feed them provinces over there they'll help us out quite a lot when we fight the hre and when we want to expand in iberia once we establish strong enough colonies i do recommend breaking your alliance with these nations down here and fighting them and taking iberia for yourself stealing their colonies like i said fighting denmark stealing norway and sweden and you should have complete dominance over the western portion of europe by around the 1600s of course once you establish a few colonies in north america and once they're self-sustainable you will want to shift your focus to africa and india and the east indies you will want to colonize these provinces here island hop over to india island hop over to southeast asia and colonize over there lots of new monuments have been added in 1.32 you will be finding them all around the world and all of them are very beneficial to us we do start off with the tower of london and the stonehenge which are kind of meh so you don't need to focus on upgrading these but you will be finding very nice monuments later down the line that you can definitely use to your advantage for your next idea groups if you picked quantity and economic you should go exploration and expansion if you went exploration and expansion like me once again i recommend quantity and economic later you can take trade quality offensive influence anything you want pretty much it's an entirely open game what i would do in my case is go exploration expansion quantity economic quality trade and then the final two really don't matter because at that point you're already the most powerful nation in the world of course when you form great britain you should take the new traditions and ambitions great britain does have better ideas than england in my opinion and for your next government reforms for tier 5 you should take royal decree for tier 6 you should take letas et moi and for tier 7 you should take political absolutism when the protestant reformation comes around sure you could go anglican if you're into the rp i don't think anglican is very powerful and a lot of people would say to go protestant as england or great britain in fact the protestant reformation has already spawned but catholic has been buffed so much in 1.32 these papal bonuses here are crazy i actually recommend staying catholic as england even though we will suffer a few penalties from the treaty of tordesillas where you can colonize a colonial region and another nation is not supposed to colonize there i still recommend staying as catholic because catholic is super powerful in 1.32 you can even try and go for the papal controller england has a couple of unique achievements that you can do one night in paris where you need to own and core the province of paris you will do that once you integrate france an industrial revolution where as great britain you need to own all of england as core provinces and have at least 25 dev in each of them so those are these regions right here you need to have 25 dev in all of these provinces quantity and economic will help you out a lot with that and it'll be easy to get and then of course we have one of the most popular achievements in u4 anglophile where you need to complete the entire english and british mission tree like i said these are not all the missions and you will be getting even more once you form Great Britain. And like I said, around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel and you can continue playing as England from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you wanna watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash theredhawklive and if you wanna catch up on stuff over there, you should subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more you can consider subscribing so you don't miss out on anything and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video